everyone, I'm Caitlin Becker here at Who Say, joined by Hale Appleman, the star of Sci-Fi's hit series, The Magicians. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Season two. Yeah. Your character, Elliot, has, Elliot. this is a big season for Elliot. Yeah, Elliot has kind of grown from, you know, sidekick, party boy, to being the king of Fillory, which is essentially Narnia. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Quite a step. Yeah, he Side took kick, a party boy, uh -huh. king of magical land. Yeah, yeah, his uh, he's he's earned his own storyline this season, which is really exciting, and um, we're exploring a, a larger scope on the show. Um, Fillory is the magical fantasy land of your childhood dreams, uh, but it's it's a lot darker and more complex than uh, anyone. Imagined. And we got hints at Fillory in the beginning. Yeah, we, there was sort season of Season one, mm -hmm. we sort of had... Dream sequences and flashbacks and, and, and a little taste of the kind of creature that you might meet in Fillory or uh, the characters that you might come across that have passed over into Earth or in New York City. And season two, you get to meet a lot more of uh, the world. The world really gets filled in a little bit more, and so that's exciting. For those of us that have lived in New York City, I know you were born and raised there, yeah. I lived there, um, it's actually kind of plausible that some of these people and creatures might be roaming around the streets. That's true. It's yeah. a unique cast of characters there if in New York. If you squint your eyes really, really strongly, you might be able to spot some magicians on the street in New York City. It happens to me every day. <laughs> so. You know, what I found really fun mm -hmm. about season two is that it, there was such a departure um, from sort of a little bit of what we were used to with season one, where we had kind of real life. It was right. these sort of magical types of people, this world um, in, infused into our common everyday life that we can relate to. But once we get into sort of fillery, we are right. getting, um, we're kind of getting to open up that sort of fantasy side That's of things, right. which is really, really fun. And I have to imagine for you yeah. to go from that sort of everyday magic and everyday life to magic being everyday life has to be fun. Absolutely. I mean, I think I think the show, you know, sort of grounds itself in stories that are innately human coming of age stories. But um, it's fun to expand into the fantasy uh, for all the fantasy fans, you know. And I grew up, you know, loving uh, Tolkien and... Uh, the Princess Bride and, and uh, Monty Python's Search for the Holy Grail is like a, a real childhood favorite of mine. And Fillory kind of has elements of all of those uh, aspects. And Narnia, of course. Um, and so it's fun to kind of see when the show um, wears its references on its sleeve in a really deliberate way. Um, and there's something intentionally kind of meta about that, I think, that um, Lev Grossman, the author, intended, and also our showrunners, uh, John and Sarah, also are... are very, uh, in one of key. the in episodes in the first season, Elliot actually gives us a Nevada Cadaver moment. That's right. A little like Harry yeah. Potter nod, which is sort right. of a cute way of acknowledging the other um, stories that make these kinds of worlds. Right, exactly. Uh, at first in the show, we were, you know, they said, you know, try not to talk about Harry Potter for adults. And then it kind of just became this thing that everyone embraced because quite obviously that is uh, an influence. You know, Lev Grossman is a huge Harry Potter fan, so. Um, it's not lost on anyone. Well, I also think there you have to be able to acknowledge that world because those kids that start in the films and those kids that grew up reading them are now adults. That's right. So you have a built-in fan base of 100%. children who grew up yeah. and are now in their 20s and 30s exactly. who want to see sort of a grown-up version of that uh, fantasy life that can pertain to us with more sort of a more mature audience 100 and you guys really hit that i mean you don't dance around um adult issues right exactly and when i read the books i really felt uh lev grossman had tapped into something that was missing in the cultural landscape he's really taking all of those influences and turning them on their head and, and creating something new with it so um yeah i'm i'm very excited by all of it really so from what i understand you auditioned for a different role yeah. And, yeah. And, and you ended up <laughs> sort of being Elliot. Did mm -hmm. it take you a little while to sort of find um, his, he has a little bit of that X factor on camera that you right. you know it when you see it, but you can't put your finger on it. Right, I, right, How right. did you sort of find that? Well, um, I guess first of all, I, I while I would have liked to have been right for Penny, I, I, that was clear in the room that it wasn't my part. Uh, and, and when I started reading the books, soon after I started auditioning, I, I knew that there was something about that character. I knew that if I had, if I had really uh, been given the opportunity, I could, I could take Elliot somewhere really interesting. And um, I think part of what's so fascinating about him is that um, 
he really has a range of experience in his life and what he's presenting to the world is some is quite different than what he's feeling inside most of the time and i think that that's something there's something universal in that in terms of coming of age and growing up and sorting through your stuff and trying to figure out um, who you are and what you want and i think elliot wants to be perceived in a very specific way while kind of ignoring everything that's come before which is you know probably a, a childhood of, of incredible trauma, which the show sort of like peeks at here and there, but you don't really get to see a lot of. So um, it would be really easy to write him off as, as you know, uh, a kind of like one-liner sidekick, flip flippant, uh, whimsical character 100% of the time. And, and I think what's interesting about him is that he is layered. And, and the joy of playing him is that I get to kind of explore those layers and peel them back every once in a while. Um, so I knew that, that, that if um, I got a shot, I could kind of, uh, kind of start to give little peeks at that. And I think you can do that more, certainly in season two, as the storyline mm -hmm. progresses. I mean, when you take a character like Elliot and then you put him in a position where he has to um, be in power and he has to, you know, with power takes, have that responsibility mm -hmm. of this sort of area. And oh, then you yeah. give him a wife. Oh, yeah. Oh, that God. he certainly yeah, yeah, did not yeah. sign up for. No, no he, he wasn't expecting that. and, and uh, most, most gay men aren't expecting to be married to right, a wife sure. and, and ruling a yeah, land. Yeah, yeah. And ruling a land. You know, I guess there's something somewhat timely in terms of, you know, these privileged kids, you know, ruling a country they know nothing about. <laughs> hmm. hmm. I wonder how that reflects in life. I don't know. I did read somewhere that you said you would never date anyone who was a fan of Donald Trump now that you just brought, brought that, us there. Wow, thank you. You really did your research. Well, yeah. That's really nice. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. It's I don't know always... who doesn't. That seems like... Listen up, journalism She's school got student. It. Hey, kids. Do your research. Yes. But yeah, so that seems like a perfect sort of segue <laughs> into... But, you know, you're on a show that is in this fantasy world and a lot of fun, but you can still have um, the ability to sort of comment on social issues, which has to be part of what makes being an actor great. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily go out and talk about them, but you can yeah, reflect them. Yeah, there's something, right, inherent in the subject matter there. Um, yeah, I think that that is really important, uh, especially in today's world. And, and while you know, I don't necessarily strive to be um, political 100% of the time. Oh, God, um, it'll kill you. I, yeah, I really, you know. Um, but but that being said, times being what they are, I think it's it's incredibly important that um, we explore themes that are relevant uh, in our in our world today and and discuss um, you know the issues that we all are facing. And it's way more fun to discuss them when we're talking about magic. And it's fun, right? Exactly. The magicians contextualizes it in a, in a really entertaining way, and that's and that's fun. And so um, it's exciting to be. Uh, on a show that, that kind of can do both in that way. When you um, first joined the cast and you guys were working on your initial season and no one had seen it yet, did you have expectations with how it's going to be received? I mean, you're talking oh, about yeah. uh, it's a niche oh kind of show on sci-fi. We're talking about adult magicians. You know, how are people going to receive that? And the overwhelming response to the show is positive yeah. from viewers and critics. And that's really rare, especially yeah. for something on it, something so niche. And especially in season two, yeah. It, 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 it's gone up in season two. Yeah, it's, it's, it's doing well. It's, it's really, really nice. I mean, I, I was, to be honest, mostly just concerned about bringing a character to life that um, existed in, in books, in a really loved book series. Um, and I, uh, Mostly just was terrified that the fans wouldn't embrace me as Elliot. You know, there's a very specific, vivid picture painted of him in the books. And so my, my primary goal was to bring as much of that as I could um, into the world of the show. And, um, you know, so far they've been mostly really uh, positive and, and embracing of me as him. And, and the sci-fi fan base is really uh, particularly protective and, and devoted. Um, the fan art is like on another planet. I mean, these kids are so, so talented. Some of the stuff they, they paint and draw and some of it is computer generated. And yeah, I just um, continuously am blown away by their... It's such an interesting avenue uh, as an actor to go down because you could probably do 30 roles in the next 10 years of your life and you'll right. never hit that sort of devoted fan base mm. that you get from something 
in fantasy because right. in fantasy you're allowed to um, to play and imagine mm -hmm. and it's stuff that we love to do as a kid. Right, so exactly. It's one of those things that if you don't appreciate and you can take it, it into your adult yeah, life. Yeah, and right? if you don't appreciate it yeah. now that you're in it, I mean, you could go exactly. and do a ton of different characters, but yeah. no one's doing fan art of you right. know, a crime procedural. That's right, kind of weird, but <laughs> right, exactly. Or maybe they are. Maybe Who's they to are. say? You know what? If you're not, yeah. Sure. I'm yeah. sure the people at Law and Order SVU would appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sure they have fan art. Yeah, they probably but, you do. Know, but anyway, in today's world, you know, we can see everything, right? Everything is made public. Um, but, you know, for me also, having grown up a fantasy fan, it's, it's particularly lovely for me to get to, to play in these worlds and wake up on set. And, you know, I, I was a really, you know, um, weird, imaginative kid. And, and so um, it kind of touches me in a way that I get to live out some of my childhood fantasies on the show as well. Speaking of childhood fantasies, my dream as a kid was always to go to the Performing Arts High School. Oh. And you got to go. I did, I did. So I'm a little bit of a, yeah. I'm a little jealous. What you was that be. like? You I know, and be. if you guys don't know what I'm talking uh, to about, be honest, watch Fame. Yeah, I, <gasps> um, I, I was born in New York City, but I grew up in the suburbs until about high school. And um, yeah, and I transferred to, to the Performing Arts High School, LaGuardia. And, um, yeah, I just, I had wanted to go there from the time I was, I guess, 10. Um, and my parents let me audition and, and yeah, it was really, it was a really life-changing experience. When you're, when you're 14 or 15 and you're in a school of, I guess, 2,700 young artists, there's just a really palpable energy in that building. And, Probably and, um, a lot of drama. A lot of drama, Ooh. too much drama. But you know, New York City kids have seen it all, so there's a little bit of like a been there, done that vibe too. But the the, the potency of everyone's kind of like collective vibe, for lack of a better word, is just really beautiful and really contagious. And I just, it was a really happy, exciting time. Um, and I worked really hard and had amazing teachers, and and I got the most out of it. You know, so so I loved considering, it. well, okay, I get it. I didn't get to go. You loved it. It was amazing. Yeah. I get it. Mom, I'm still pissed. <laughs> did you ask? Did you try? Of course I did. Did you I'm, grow up in, in New York? I grew up in Jersey. Ah. But two and a half hours from New York. And I'm I'm married in 32 and my mom still had a hard time letting me move to LA. So right. at 14, she was not letting me move to New York. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was warned against LA as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. and now here we are. Here we are, everyone. Now, considering how you sort of grew up in this industry and you, you went to theater camps and mm -hmm. um, you were able to go to the performing arts high school, it has to drive you crazy when you hear that there are school districts and places in the country where they don't think art programs oh, yeah. matter. I mean, not everybody lives close to New York and has that opportunity. Uh -huh. So someone in Idaho should be able to, I don't know, take an art class, learn the trombone. 100%. You know, the acts would have yeah. to probably drive you crazy. I mean, you got yeah. I had a lot of access. I also had um, artist parents, so so I was from a really early age. Um, uh, art was of value to my whole family, so um, that's that's a a gift that I wish all kids had. And unfortunately, I think it falls to parents for the most part to expose their children to uh, the arts because a lot of uh, school funding is getting cut these days. And um, yeah, it's a it's a huge. Huge bummer. I know you have a big theater background. Yeah. So one of the best parts about living in a city, particularly New York, but any kind of city, is access to the theater. I mean, you have the big shows that sort of tour through lots of cities, but the smaller shows and mm -hmm. off-Broadway productions, yeah. you know, do you, um, do you have favorite shows that you love to go see? Do you have favorite theater actors? Favorite shows that I love to go see? No, I mean, I guess you know there are favorite, there are favorite plays that I've seen in my life that you know have changed me. I, I saw Michael Stuhlbarg do Hamlet, which was amazing, and and uh, I saw let's see, um, also he was in this, this play, The Pillow Man, by Martin McDonough, which is an incredible play. Um, that that really um, changed me. I think I was maybe like eighteen or nineteen when that happened. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of theater, and and I've done a lot of theater too, and. Um, yeah, the stage is kind of like where my heart beat first, you know, so um, I'll always go back to the stage. And it's, uh, it has to be the type of skill set that you get in theater mm -hmm. um, translates to television and film, but yeah, there's in a way. nothing more challenging than having to turn it on for this right. amount of times. You don't get retakes, you don't right, get right. Yeah, you it's don't a, get resets. There are particular skills, you know, for each medium and, and, you know, theater taught me to really 
um, work my way through a role and, and take it apart and put it back together and, and really invest time and energy exploring who that person is as much as possible. And um, you know, you have that with rehearsal in theater. And um, so, so that, that's useful for me in terms of a certain kind of preparation that I bring to, to what I do on camera. Because certainly um, with Elliot, there's for something sure. theatrical Especially, about There's something him. theatrical. He's putting on a show a lot of the time until he cracks and then, you know, his heart rips open. And he has that sort of um, Prince David Bowie Thank you. Yes. quality where um, there's sort of that raw sort of sex appeal, but it's kind of in your face. Right. I mean, that's sort of that kind of confidence that those exactly. types of people exude is right. sort of what I feel like Right. And Elliot's him. essentially, you know, putting putting that mask on intentionally to kind of, you know, hide um, the darker stuff that he doesn't want to talk about. But he, you just brought up mm -hmm. sort of cracks in his veneer and just to bring mm -hmm. it back to the, sure. to the magicians before we wrap it up here, are we going to see more of what kind of makes him tick internally? Yeah, you'll see a little bit this season uh, towards the end. But, you know, my, my great hope for the show as it continues, as, you know, I hope we do continue, um, is that we really do get to explore some of his, like, internal emotional machinery. I think that that... Um, I think people are, are looking forward to that. And, you know, we get a little bit, we get tastes of it throughout the season. Um, and certainly by the end, Elliot starts to take more responsibility for his life. So we've watched him really evolve and grow into someone who's starting to look at adulthood um, through the lens of a, of a baby adult. <laughs> you know, a baby adult. You know baby adult. adults. Yes. You know? We pretty much are baby adults. Yeah, baby here adults. At this point. This, you're looking at two baby adults right okay. here. You know, I just this type of show, I have to imagine that all of your sort of fans expect you to be able to do some sort of magic when they see you. Right. So how are you at like sleight of hand? Oh, terrible. Not good. <laughs> not, no, I'm good, good at shuffling cards, but I'm not good at card tricks. You could really bring them in though with the shuffle and then, yeah, I could then just, it just you know, kind of fizzles out. I'll wow you with my shuffle, but that's it. <laughs> it ends there. Hale, thank you yeah. so much for thank joining you. me here today. Yeah. Of course, you can catch Hale in The Magicians on Sci-Fi. We're in the middle of season two, so go back and binge if you haven't already started.